guys, Lakeisha McKinnon here with your Life After Lockup updates. And basically, if you've never heard of those reality shows right now, it's the prison romance show that WeTV started in 2018. And I know that things are hard economically right now, um, but I just don't know who would say my life is already hard. Let me make it 100 times harder by dating a prisoner. But some of my favorite castmates are on here. And basically, I would have to say my favorite castmates that are on here right now that have returned are some of them that were my favorite castmates were Marciano and Brittany. And basically, I was uh, so happy with their storyline because Brittany put her prison past behind her. She found a successful career as a realtor. Uh, Marcelino was basically a professional gambler, uh, but he would take on a more role. Um, in his parenting role, he did more of the uh, child care, which basically caused a divide between the happy couple. Um, Basically, I was happy, proud of them because of the things that they had accomplished and overcame. And they were one of my favorite couples on Life After Lockup or Love After Lockup. However, on this season, uh, the tables have definitely turned. And I definitely think that Brittany messed up by inviting her ex-girlfriend, Amanda, into their bedroom. So where they were creating a happy life. They had uh, Brittany's older son and I think two children of their own. This was her idea. So they acted on her idea and now Marcelino was messaging her ex-girlfriend Amanda. Basically, Amanda didn't say anything to Brittany. I don't know why. Brittany blew up, tried to fight Amanda or pushed her down, all this other crazy stuff. Um, and basically is ready to separate, I guess, from Marcelino. So while they were once one of my favorite couples making a, being a success story, they have now turned into, I don't know. Moving on, let's talk about Kevin and Tiffany. Now, Kevin basically is a playboy and Tiffany was in jail. Well, for Kevin, I would have never taken Tiffany serious when you go pick her up from the rehab and she has another guy there to pick her up. And this other guy gets in your face. You knock him out. Later on, she calls you. You go pick her up. I would have never took her serious after that anyway but then you still have your ex-girlfriend and I'll put her name on the screen that you're still messing around with and then you guys want to investigate bringing someone in in your bedroom but uh, Kevin's playboy lifestyle is hard to ignore Tiffany ended up finding women's underwear in his room she stormed out then here comes Kayla and Kayla will not let Kevin go and she's stirring up all kinds of drama. So Tiffany ended up coming back after Kevin slept with Kayla. And they ended up going on a date to find another member to accompany them in their bedroom practices. Well, Kayla's on the scene. She's texting Kevin and she's calling him. So he decides to cut the date short. Anyway, this is just drama, drama, drama. And who knows what's going to happen next. But just crazy. And Chaz and Brienne, or Brendalyn, whatever her name is. This couple is just like, hmm. It's just a little on the weird side to me because Chaz, he, he seems like a very sweet gentleman. But... Branwyn doesn't seem like she's into him at all. From the day they met outside the prison, got married, 
it seems like she needs a support, someone to support her financially. It, I see no attraction at all. And I don't want to be mean to Chess, but they just don't look like they mesh. And he's been to Oregon several times and they are just now consummating their relationship like on the third time. There's no attraction there at all. And basically, uh, they faced their first challenge immediately, which was distance. Branwyn's parole restrictions require her to stay in Portland, and Chaz has a job he takes very seriously back in Kentucky. Once they're able to be together, um, Chaz's sister struggles to accept the relationship, and Branwyn's daughter and friends think Chaz and the move are a bad idea. Meanwhile, Branwyn's bad boy ex-boyfriend, Aaron, might have something to say about the new marriage. So to me, they're just really not going to make it. She's not into him. And she has every excuse in the book for why she can't be with him or whatever. She's just not into him. And I think he just needs to move on. And then uh, with the last episode, he goes on to her website. Now, I hope that she's not dumb enough to still be escorting herself out because clearly she's going to wind up back in prison. But anyway, Taylor and Chance. Taylor and Chance, they're okay, mm, whatever. But Taylor lives with her sister, Bobby. She goes and marries this guy, Chance. She has three children. Chance is really weird. Um, he goes off and buys a truck and with rims and, and all this other weird stuff. And he does not want her sister Bobby to live there. He he finally talks Taylor into turning the garage into a bedroom. Now, as soon as he moves in. Now, my garage is definitely different from the rest of the house as far as insulation, ventilation, um, the air conditioning and all of that. If someone said, here's a garage to live in, I'm out. But he's supposed to be remodeling it for her and all that. But Bobby feels that it's a ploy uh, to get rid of her sister. Her sister has a drug problem. They're twins. And Chance has been in and out of prison his adult life. But I just, I, I don't know about Chance. I, I really don't. He does some very weird things. And that's all I'll say about that. Those two, they're they're not one of my favorite couples either. So then we have Sean and Sarah in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, Sean was on the last season with another young lady. I'll put her picture on the screen because I can't even remember her name. They weren't one of my favorite couples. Sarah is five months pregnant. Sean has about 25 kids with this one, his baby's mama that he never married. He has older kids. I mean, old enough to go into the military. He has an older daughter. It's, it's just crazy. So, he was dating Destiny. She was out there. And Sean, the last episode, Sean and Sarah were preparing to get married. And he invited his ex-wife. supposedly for his daughter's sake. So the wedding cake is actually a gender reveal cake. So the older daughter, once it's revealed that he's gonna have another daughter, she's having a fit. You're like 20 years old, get over it. She's breaking down, she, it's just drama. Sean is drama, period. And then the ex-wife who acted like she was cool with the wedding, then she's like, that could have been me. After 25 kids and y'all didn't get married, it shouldn't have been her. But anyway, they're not one of my favorite couples. Um, I'm just glad that Destiny stayed. Destiny was planning to come crash the wedding to get some money that she claimed Sean owed her for a car that he had got in his name. He was making the payments for. I guess they broke up. The car wasn't paid for if you're making payments on it. So he had the car picked up to turn it back in. And she's saying he owes her money for that. Destiny, get a life. I know you still just want to be on TV, but nobody cares. So,
So, Amber and Puppy. Hmm. So, Amber is doing pretty good for herself. Puppy is with the guy, Eric, who's still married. And the weirdest thing, you're married, but you ask Puppy to marry you. How does that work? And you're not even trying to get a divorce. So, now Puppy's pregnant. So, Amber has the bright idea that her and Puppy should follow Eric to see where he's going. Now, he has a nice charger or challenger, excuse me. They have a nice house, but you don't have money for a divorce. Okay. So, they try to follow him. He finds out they're following him. He fusses them out. He comes back to the house. They get in an argument. And he's about to storm off. She tells him she's pregnant. He comes back. Their storyline is not that great for me either. And they're in Georgia, Douglasville, Georgia. But let's see where we go with this. Now we have Brittany and Ray. Now, Brittany is a young lady that seems to have everything going for herself, but there is a problem. She just keeps attracting these guys that are in prison and supposedly before she was in relationships with domestic violence so here's ray he's just getting out of prison seems like a nice young man however he owes like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars in restitution so ray gets the ring he goes he's ready to propose to Brittany. he goes and speaks to her mom and dad and her dad's like no you need to prove it to me you need to work more longer and prove that you're in this thing for real the mom's like okay but the dad's like no so he still goes and speaks to Brittany. they still get engaged she's picking out her dress and all this stuff and her mom's like look we work hard to uh put to save a little something for you guys so that you'll have something so you need to get a prenup because ray owes one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in restitution that's a house so let's see what happens with them their storyline is okay but yeah so then we come to the clown of the show and who was that that is Deontay and Lindsay now the reason I say that they're the clown is they were both on last season Lindsay was with this guy named Scott this older guy uh, she went to jail for drug charges all this other stuff Scott gets uh, a house ready for her and all this and they clearly aren't compatible. She ends up going back to jail, scratching her name on his desk or whatever. So then we have Deontay. He is clearly like, I would say, Angela, Kimberly, Big Ed, and Caesar from 90 Day Fiance. He wants to date people that are not on his same level. So last, season he was dating a girl I'll put her picture on the screen I really don't even remember her name and basically she just wanted to use him he made it so easy to do it so now he's dating Lindsay and he is like a serial stalker so in his past Deontay has been accused of not paying bills not paying rent not paying for his vehicle and giving his money to his girls, getting evicted, and his mom and even his younger brother, like that's in high school, is giving him information on dating and being not being stupid. But of course, Deontay is going to be Deontay, and he goes and now he hooked up with Lindsay, and Lindsay doesn't seem like she wants to use him, but it seemed like she had more of a need for him when she was in prison when she can control the conversation because now that she's out she's living with her homeboy blaine and blaine seems like he has some undercover plans for her and she has a daughter she needs to get herself together to, to take care of her however deontay his mom is like what is wrong with you it's like he just goes to the prison books to that's all he ever looks to date so Lindsay is clearly getting tired of him because he's texting her like every five minutes and he's jealous and his homeboy that was on the show the last time that was telling him hey 
you know, this girl's using you. He wasn't trying to listen. And then he's on here. I'm tired of being called a fool. Well, quit acting like one. But um, he came to get his shoes that Deontay borrowed. Now, when he was in Mississippi with Lindsay, she was saying, you have about 10 pairs of uh, Jordans, but you have about 1,500 items in collections. Pay your bills, Deontay. But anyway, Deontay is thinking about moving to Mississippi. But before he does that, he needs to know that Lindsay talked to her lawyer and she could be facing up to 30 years. So while he is definitely the clown of the show, my husband and I watch to see what stupid stuff he's going to do next. That is one of the reasons that we like to watch Life After Lockup because of the sheer stupidity of the people that are on the cast. Because you have people like Sean, Deontay, and they seriously just date people that are in prison. Maybe they need some help. I, I, I don't know. But we can't wait to see what things are in store for Taylor and Chance. And if I fail to mention, Taylor is also pregnant. Chaz and Branwyn, I don't think they have a future because they don't even seem compatible. Kevin and Tiffany. Sean and Sarah. Amber and Puppy, Brittany and Ray, Marcelino and Brittany, I hope they can get it together. I really like them as a couple. And the clown, Deontay and Lindsay. So stay tuned for the next recap of Life After Lockup and Let's Laugh Together.